struggling to hold their positions. These fighters are working with the army, trying to stop the advance of Islamist militias. We are some of the few journalists to access these front lines. It's impossible to reach this area without the protection of these fighters. This was the city that started the Libyan revolution five years ago. Look at it now. Entire neighborhoods have been destroyed and thousands have fled. The armed forces still control most of the city. But now they are losing ground to the Islamists. Inside these damaged buildings are snipers, which put all these roads and residential areas under threat. A growing number of commanders blame the losses on the army's leadership. What pushed us to this situation are the political disputes. There's a big disagreement between the frontline commanders, the army leadership, and the politicians. Just a few hundred meters away from the front line, a local school. It has been hit before, but children are desperate for an education. Here, the gunfire is constant. The pupils no longer react. Their teacher tries to reassure me. Everything is fine, she tells me. But after missing almost two years of school, these children's futures are bleak. Emerging from the chaos in Benghazi, the so-called Islamic State is now the biggest threat. We saw their black flag clearly visible from the only entrance into the city. The group's influence is growing as fighters from other Islamist militias join them. Back on the front line, the men rest after a long day. All of them here say they will keep fighting. But as disagreements within the armed forces grow, so does the strength of the Islamic State. Firas Kilani, BBC News, Benghazi.